Arizona Cardinals fans, hopefully the drama is over, but we don't really know. Uh, the continued rumors around the building of what's going to happen with Kyler Murray, this is not the video to fix those problems, but it is uh, It is a cloud hanging over the barrel cactus. Well, I mean, you got screwed by the Deshaun Watson thing. They're the team that is going to be most affected by the $230 million guaranteed that, they, that the Browns gave to Deshaun. I don't think it will be a hang-up of Lamar, but I do think it will in Arizona. And, and the thing with Arizona, which does tie into this draft class, you have to understand how bad the NFC is. So if you're Arizona, you got to be looking at this going, do we need some breaks? Yes. Yeah. But are we still a competitor? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 100%. The Rams have gotten worse. I would argue Tampa Bay has gotten worse. The Dallas Cowboys have gotten worse. We haven't really gotten worse. We've gotten more dramatic, but we're still the same team. So you're looking to bring in impact players that fix problems and can be uh, dynamic immediately. So what will they do in the NFL draft? Let's get into it. The post-free agency seven-round mock draft for the Arizona Cardinals starts at number 23 in the first round. And you got them taking Dax Hill, the cornerback out of Michigan. They are not particularly good in the back half. Uh, the problem for them is that virtually all of the outside starting corners are off the board or they're risky or they're not scheme fits. So what I have them doing is bringing in a kid in Dax Hill that can man the slot. He can play safety. He's just going to be a weapon. And if any team does that better than the Arizona Cardinals, I don't know who it is. You've got Zayvon Collins. You've got Isaiah Simmons mm -hmm. that are – this defense is becoming positionless in the back seven, and Dax Hill is a player that really preys on that. Ran a 4-3-8 at the combine, six foot tall, 190 pounds. Uh, he's a good cover guy. He's a good tackler. He's one of my favorite players in this draft. It's just a question of where is he going to play down in and down out. Now, this, this league is moving more in the slot. Just look at Cooper Cup in your own division. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he – I'm not going to say he fixes that problem. It's impossible to say that a rookie is going to come in and mitigate the best receiver in the NFL from last year. Right. But he certainly helps. Uh, and then on stationary base set downs, he plays safety, and you can roam him around, and he plays very much like Tyron Matthew. I think that will help. Also helps with the pass rush because you can send him off the edge, and he is a dynamic pass rusher. Speaking of the pass rush, you lose uh, Chandler Jones in free agency. And in the second round, maybe this is a uh, a patchwork for that. At number 55 overall, Cameron Thomas, edge rusher from San Diego State. And see, to me, this is not a patchwork. This is a, I have J.J. Watt, I have Marcus Golden, so I'm good on the edges. I need somebody that can get pass rush from the interior, and that's what Cameron Thomas is. I feel like people are miscasting him as he's going to be a straight-line edge. I don't think he is. I think he's going to come in the league as a defensive tackle, and he's going to be a – phenomenal version of that because all of the things that he doesn't do well the bend the 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 flex off the edge he can't get around big powerful off okay how do you mitigate that stop asking him to do it mm -hmm. straight line he's a bull of a human you'd have to bulk him up a little bit he's 6'5 265 pounds but the lack of athleticism he goes from being one of the lesser dynamic athletic edges in this draft to being the most dynamic athletic interior pass rusher in this draft, and he fits tremendously in this Arizona scheme. I think that so I'm invariably somebody's going to ask, you don't draft an out a, an outside corner. No, you can do better going after a Stephon Gilmore or somebody like that than reaching for a corner because they keep going in front of you. In the third round, 87th overall, Christian Kirk no longer in town. So add to the wide receiver room here with a talented kid out of South Alabama, Jalen Tolbert. He's a great deep threat. And that's, if you look at what they have, DeAndre Hopkins can do everything. Rondale Moore is a gadgety slot guy. What do you need? The guy that can take the top off the defense. That's exactly what Jalen Tolbert is. 6'3", uh, good frame. Might need to bulk up a little bit. Jam I'm afraid that jams and press and, and things like that in the league might mess with him off the jump. The only problem with him is that he ran a 4-4-9 when we thought he would run a 4-3-9. I don't so much care about that. Where it's going to push him down, because Adam is a second-round pick coming into this. Now he's in the third. And, and the biggest reason for that is 
teams are going to look at the level of competition and go, you never played against four, three, five corners. So you were able to blow past guys that don't have the athleticism play in the NFL. I don't think that's a problem. And he's got great body control. He's going to have to learn a real route tree. But one way to mitigate that is to go to a team that doesn't run an NFL route tree. Right. So it's it's a softer transition. I think he would immediately be the two and, and allow Rondell Moore to do the things he wants to do. It, it would be a great fit. You would have to know that there's going to be some transition. He's not going to come in and be an elite two right off the jump. Mm-hmm going to be a rookie but he's a rookie with a lot of very good high upside the cardinals have a lot to do late in the draft as they don't have a pick in the fourth or the fifth but they do have two in the sixth and three in the seventh so let's get to the sixth round picks here in the post free agency seven round mock draft brought to you by the sportsocracy.com uh at number 202 alex wright edge rusher from uab he has a i'm too tall problem Six seven two seventy, not crazy athletic, but he's a very good pass rusher. Uh, this is to me a third in the rotation of in the beginning. The only thing I'm going to ask you to do is line up on the edge and go get the quarterback. That's it. It's like a dog fetching a ball. Go get it. Yep. That's all I want him to do because he does have. He's not the the freak athlete. You'll hear me say that there are a ton of edge rushers in this class that are just freaks in nature. He's not one of them. He's really tall, and he plays really upright, which allows good offensive linemen to push him around. Now, if you ever teach him bend, he could be a steal of this draft because there are a lot of moves. There's a lot of good reactionary ability. That's one thing you cannot teach a guy. Invariably, if you see it on tape in in college, it's going to translate to the league. Read and react skills, and he is better at that than damn near any edge rusher in this class. The only problem is that he is so limited athletically that there is a thought that just because you're going to be able to read and react to it doesn't mean you're going to be able to do anything about it. You teach him better technique. You teach him a little bend. Teach him to stop playing like he's got a two-by-four jammed up his ass. And now all of a sudden, those pass rush skills are dynamic. And he becomes a situation. I don't think he's ever more than a situational pass rusher because I don't think he's ever going to be good enough against the run to be down in, down out. But putting him on the opposite side of a J.J. Watt or a Marcus Golden. But I'll tell you what I really look at is you could have a front four in pass rush downs with Golden on the outside, Alex Wright on the outside, and then Cam Thomas and J.J. Watt on the inside. And that looks very similar to that NASCAR package that the Giants ran back in the mid-2000s mm-hmm. where they just had four guys. I don't have to send anything else. I can let the seven athletic guys in the back half do what they do I'm going to play zone, just make sure nobody burns you, and those four are going to get home pretty damn quick. Which would allow you a lot to play with with that back half with the guys that you mentioned, Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins and you know freeing up Byron Murphy and all that. Um, all right, with a compensatory pick at 216, Zachary Carter, defensive tackle from Florida. Uh, can you tell that I have very little faith in damn near anything that the, the Cardinals have on – the defensive line outside of J.J. Watt and Marcus mm-hmm. Golden. We can tell. If you're going to do what it is that I think you're going to do, because I'm a big fan of complementary drafting. All right, so you've already gone Zayvon Collins. You've already gone Isaiah Simmons. Neither one of those guys really has a position. And so the way to mitigate all these things is the Leighton Van Der Esch rule. Leighton Van Der Esch is every bit as good as what happens in front of him because he does have limitations. Well, you have two guys with unlimited athletic potential – but they don't know what position they play. So clearing up all of the shit in front of them becomes very important. That's something Zachary Carter can do. Uh, and and he's, he is a bit raw. Uh, I think he's a better run stuffer than people really believe. He's a little thin to, to play the way that he's going to play in the league. But I'm okay with that. He's a developmental piece. He's going to be another in that rotation. And to me, I think that fixes a lot of your problems in the back half without directly fixing your problems in the back half. You can reach on a corner all you want to. If you can't get to the quarterback and you don't have the players, an injury happens. There's no Chandler Jones now. Mm -hmm. J.J. Watt gets hurt this year. You're down to Marcus Golden and a bunch of rookies. Or you just throw a bunch of pieces at it and go, you know what, interchangeable. It's what Arizona does better than any team in this league. And I think that would be a home run start to this draft. The first of their three picks in the seventh round comes at 245. 
Zacoby McLean, linebacker out of Auburn. Really good against the run. Uh, this is complimentary to to Simmons and and Zayvon Collins because this is the thumper that can just stay in the box and as opposed to allowing teams to just run the ball down your throat, which you did at times last year, he's a first, second down linebacker that can come in and help you hold up against that. And, and that's what a lot of this is. I'm trying to force you into obvious pass down situations because I will be good enough at getting to your quarterback that it will circumvent some of my issues. Uh, I like Zacoby McLean. He's never going to be a three down linebacker. He's just not good enough at coverage. Uh, and I don't think he's ever going to be. 10 years ago, he would have been a safety. Because he's only six foot tall, he's 220 pounds, and he would have been the slowest safety in NFL history. Now he can be the short, squatty, hold up against the run and let the athletic guys do their thing. With the first of their two compensatory picks in the seventh round, the Arizona Cardinals at 257th overall could take a running back out of Missouri, Tyler Batty. You got James Conner back. No more Chase Edmonds. You lost Chase Still Edmonds. Still have Eno. And, and Eno's <laughs> fine, but you need somebody that's a little bit more dynamic, and mm -hmm. I think Tyler Batty can be that. I think he can be the he can be the Chase Edmonds replacement. Uh, all the running backs got pushed down in this mock, and thank you, Batman. Nice. Uh, they all got pushed down in this mock, which allows Tyler Batty to be the guy here. Uh, and I think he would be a perfect complement to James Conner. And would do some of it. My hope is that Cliff Kingsbury would trust him more than he ever trusted Chase Edmonds and give him more than eight carries a, a game. 258th overall, the final of the picks here for the Arizona Cardinals. Demarcus Fields, cornerback from Texas Tech. Very raw. This is a developmental piece. Uh, I know you want something better than this at corner, but you, everything I could have done here, you would be reaching. Uh, my next mock draft will be ideal scenarios. What would be the perfect thing to have happen? And you're going to take a corner earlier than this. Demarcus Fields is athletic enough. He just doesn't do anything tremendously well. Right now, he's better against the run than he is anything else. Uh, but he could be hid in zone coverage because he is pretty good in zone. Right now, he, his technique is very lacking in man. But the raw athleticism is what will get him drafted. I'd be a gunner on special teams to begin with because he is a very dynamic tackler. Uh, he would start off as a gunner with the intention of we're going to work on him and, and take the good and, and round off the bad, and eventually this will be a value. All right, so the post-free agency seven-round mock draft for the Arizona Cardinals. Whole lot of focus on shoring up that defense, especially on the front end. In this division, you have to. You have to look at what you're getting, getting ready to catch with Trey Lance in San Francisco, all of the weapons that you have uh, with, with, with L.A., you're not going to be able to hold up against those guys. You're just not. I don't give a damn how much money you put in the secondary. Mm -hmm. You will never hold up if you can't get to the quarterback. And, and so that's where, if I'm the Arizona Cardinals, that's where my focus would go based on how this draft is going to unfold because the corners have just been pushed up. Leave us a comment if you like the picks. If you don't like the picks, Jeremy's always responsive in the chat. Uh, if you have a mock draft that, that you think you can uh, outdo me, you might be entirely right. Throw it in the comments. I'll grade those. If there's a player you would like to know how they fit with the Arizona Cardinals, you can put that in the comments as well. I go through and answer those every day. Hit the subscribe button so you get all of our draftmas season content right here in the Sportsocracy. We cover each and every team several times. In fact, we've got a couple of more mock drafts coming before the big day arrives. And, of course, you can join us live every weekday at 3 o'clock here in the Ingalls studio. Always brought to you by Ingalls Supermarkets. Low prices, love the savings. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. Yeah. We'll see you next time.